A disease modification represents uh, about 75% uh, of all of the therapeutic attempts in the current Alzheimer's disease pipeline. Uh, there are small molecules like base inhibitors, and there are also numerous monoclonal antibodies aimed mostly at the amyloid beta protein, but also some new monoclonals that are aimed uh, at the tau protein. Monoclonal antibodies uh, are developed uh, to uh, attack uh, some specific portion of the amyloid beta molecule or uh, of the tau molecule, uh, and uh, they uh, allow the ingestion of the A beta by microglia. Uh, so their role is to facilitate the removal of amyloid beta proteins in most cases by microglia. So there is a critical interaction between the monoclonal and the microglial response. The field of Alzheimer's disease research doesn't currently really know when different therapeutic strategies should be used in the course of Alzheimer's disease. Should they be used before there's any amyloid protein in the brain, primary prevention? Should they be used when the patients still have no symptoms, but there's amyloid in the brain, that is secondary prevention? Or should they be used in prodromal disease or even AD dementia when there are more severe symptoms? Uh, at this time, there are monoclonal antibodies such as solanezumab in the A4 trial being used in preclinical disease. Uh, there are molecules such as cronazumab uh, being uh, used in prodromal disease, and there are molecules like gantanerumab uh, that are being used in prodromal disease. Uh, in addition, uh, aducanumab is being used in the, the prodromal mild AD dementia uh, spectrum of Alzheimer's disease. So there are different molecules aimed at different stages of Alzheimer's disease in the current clinical trial pipeline. Monoclonal antibodies are mainly targeting amyloid beta protein, but an exciting new approach uh, uh, is the inclusion of amyloids in the clinical trial pipeline uh, that address the tau molecule. Uh, and tau may be able to be targeted later in the disease course when patients have symptoms. Uh, and because of the tight relationship between tau, tau pathology and cognition, uh, it may be that cognition will be more affected and benefited uh, by the tau antibody. So we're particularly excited about the movement into uh, tau therapies. There are several monoclonal antibodies uh, in, in trials right now. Uh, aducanumab uh, has a particularly exciting profile with removal of the fibrillar form of A-beta. We think it also addresses the, the soluble form of A-beta. And there uh, is some evidence of a clinical benefit associated uh, uh, with treatment with aducanumab. Uh, cronazumab, gantanerumab uh, have increased their dosing strategies, and those look like, poly, like promising molecules. Uh, solanezumab is being used uh, in the A4 4 trial. There are other antibodies uh, addressing A-beta, as well as uh, antibodies addressing tau that are in the, in the pipeline. There are major challenges associated with developing monoclonal antibodies. Uh, for example, dosing. Uh, how does one dose and how does one determine a dose response relationship? This is much more difficult with a monoclonal antibody than it is with a small molecule such as the base inhibitors. So one sees, for example, in the field that the doses of solanezumab, gantanerumab, and cronazumab have all been quadrupled since they were first introduced in the first clinical trial. That suggests that, we, that the companies and sponsors believe that the dosing was inadequate to achieve their goals. But it also indicates how difficult it is 
to decide on exactly what the optimum dose is. So I would say that dosing is one of the most difficult challenges uh, in the development of monoclonal antibodies and one that we haven't completely solved yet.